a fourth rapid game and result in both the matches are tied. He starts with a 1d4. Are we going to see a queen's gambit declined? Actually, we saw this uh, strange hybrid between the uh, Nimzu Indian and the Catalan in the previous clash between these two when Abdu Satorov had the white pieces. Of course, he went on to win that game. This time, it's a pure Catalan. And, uh, okay, has he got a twist, a turn on this one? He plays Queen yep. E3. He's played this before. Interesting, but rare move. Normally, white castles in that position. What do you think of this one? Yeah, same kind of thing he did in the last white game, right? Just making a slightly offbeat move. And Babby, not really caught off guard. B6 happens pretty quickly. And he might even play Bishop A6. <laughs> Bishop A6 here yeah, is kind of a funny looking intermediate. Yeah, I like that. I like uh, I like that it, you know, the B6 move was very cool. I mean, you like Bishop A6 and back to the cool, kind of Queen's Indian like. There's no pre move cast short castle under way. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> no pre moving. <laughs> that would suck. Yeah, he's not the type to pre move, and okay, he does take the board. Babby now in the center with his knight. White does indeed get away with castling, but the white queen might well get harassed. Watch out for that black light square bishop to come out and to kick her away. I'm slightly surprised, I've got to say, at Fabi's decision to take back in the center with a knight. He lacks influence now in the center. White at some point might be able to establish a nice, uh, nice pawn center there. But uh, he's arguing that he will be in time, Fabi, to strike a white center. Uh, maybe with the move from C5, White has that extra central pawn now on D4. Looks nice and beautiful, but if you can eliminate it, trade it off. Then play will be very much balanced. So up to Satora on IC3. Looks sensible for both players so far. Now, what would we do here? Trade that knight or keep the tension? I'm keeping it. There's a common trap here that exists on a lot of these lines where you play knight takes c3. And this move doesn't work in direct response to knight takes c3, but after bc, white is actually threatening knight g5. Good thing for newer players to know. So I don't know, yeah, h6 for Oh, I'm stopping knight g5. No, you're actually enabling it. It doesn't matter how many times you defend that square. The problem is on the other side of the board. It's the bishop on b7 that's undefended, and with it falls the rook in the corner. So even strong, strong players have fallen from this time. You better watch out for that tactical trick there right now. He is deciding whether to trade on a c3 or not. And as Harvey has this thing, we also have axe.
Knight f6. Not easy. Bishop e4, knight f6, bishop f3. You have to perform the right kind of gymnastics with the bishop to be able to challenge the pawn when it hits b3. Wow. And all of that requires some calculation. He's down to a minute. And knights are tricky pieces in, in time pressure. B3, bishop d1, you hit yeah. the pawn, you win the pawn. But black doesn't have to play b3. Black can still keep clinging to that pawn with his rook. Yeah, maybe let's just put this on the board while Abdi Satoru thinks very, very quickly here. Attacking the knight looks very logical, kicking it away. The knight has to retreat, gaining time against the bishop. The bishop can retreat, and as you guys have been talking about, if the pawn advances, it will be rounded up. No way to survive any longer for this pawn. It will be cashed in on, uh, on the next move, and he's going straight for this line. Okay, first he flicks in a nasty check, just asking the black king where it wants to go. Keeping that king honest, I think he'll continue protecting the pawn next to it. So most likely slide back, and then he will drop back his bishop. This pawn is doomed long term. Great stuff. Ten seconds for Bobby. Wow. Nice Nine way. eight. He needs to make a move. Five. Rook b seven. He has to decide where to move the king. He goes king f eight. All right. Bishop f three. Still can't push the b pawn. You lose it after bishop d one. Oh, move g four now. He's trying to kick the knight out of f six so he can put that bishop on d five. No. Oh. Same idea. Even more elegant execution. Exquisite. Bishop three coming up. Brutal. Oh, Here it is. Take one. Now there it goes. About to hit the foot. Yeah. Fabi's. Yeah. Fabi's fighting uh, spirit here it has been uh, diminished. Unfortunately, no way to keep this one going. Two pawns down. No counterplay. to play. Matter of time now. Or if he's done everything right, it will be a huge shock if he lets this one slip. Another great move. Knight d6, there was rook d7. Just integrating the tactics perfectly. He's about to win a third pawn. That might trigger resignation. No. No. Black knight, no good squares for it to use. And I think Fabi, you can tell body language there. He leaned back. Has he resigned? He has. Abdu Satorov takes the match. Wow. wow. What a big win there by Abdi Satro. He keeps his form at the chess kit. What a chess kit. And that means that Hanukkah will be down in the elimination.